Engine Performance Expo. Got a treat for you. Matt Harford, and a Grenache? Am I saying that right? I'm yeah, terrible. Sure. I'm, I'm, very good. I, I'm not I, good. I couldn't say it right to eighth grade, so I'm good. That's good. I, you know, <laughs> I love Italian food, but I can't pronounce any Italian words. I love it all kinds of food. All right. I can tell you why, too. But anyways, totally different story. While we're here, you know, you guys have raced both carburetors and EFI in Pro Stock. And you guys were telling me today something that I thought fairly interesting, is that with that change, yeah. it also had an effect on something that was not part of the engine, or at least not inside the engine, but it is connected to the engine. So, Eddie, tell us about what this thing next to you is, is and <laughs> what, what the hell has been going on with these things since the EFI came in. This is our clutch, and every every pro stock uh, car has one. Every body runs maybe a different configuration, different brand. But the net net of what we're getting at here is that over the years, I'm a carburetor guy. Right. Carburetors are the most intelligent things going. This laptop that Matt usually puts the screws to me with. with yeah. this, this, <laughs> when, I, when something doesn't go right, I say it's mad fuel, fuel or something right. like that, which has a big effect on how the car reacts and how the clutch reacts right through the run. Okay, so what you're saying is that you, you used this phrase earlier, so correct me when I say it wrong. The carburetor just gave the engine what it asked for. Correct. With the laptop. I take stroke, it was pulling through the carburetor what it needed. That's all it could pull through. Took care signal itself. through the carburetor. Right. Now, uh -huh. I'm telling the engine how much fuel it's going to take, whether it wants it or not. So therefore, if I put too much fuel in there and I kill the power of the engine, all of a sudden his clutch tune-up's way off. Then we come back after the run, and he complains at me. <laughs> he does that anyway. But he complains that my, that my fuel curve ruined his clutch setup. It's never his clutch shit up screwed up my fuel curve, let's be clear. Right, right. So only a one way street. But so think about there it. There are fingers on that though. There there are. And they're and all, so they're all pointing at the driver too. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. six of them. So you think about it, the carburetor though, like Eddie said, most intelligent thing on the engine. Mm -hmm. You know, if it needed X amount of fuel, if it needed five hundred and thirty pounds an hour of fuel at ten five hundred, it took five hundred and thirty pounds of fuel. When you go to Denver, don't even change a jet, it takes four hundred and thirty pounds an hour of fuel. It corrected itself no matter where you went. If I put in the Denver tune-up in Sonoma, mm -hmm. the next thing we'd be doing is KB would be putting pistons in the right. car because yeah. we'd have it burn up. Yeah. So we have to tell the engine exactly how much fuel, where it's going to get the fuel, when it's going to get the fuel, where the carburetor handled it all, and I never messed with this question. Up. So that's interesting because we talk about all the time at the Engine Expo how interrelated parts of the engine are. That it's not just individual parts. They all live in a system. And what you're telling me is, in your type of racing, it's not just the engine, it's also the clutch. It's you have to think outside the bell housing, essentially, and get to this. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely the EFI era has been easier in a lot of ways, but it's been, it's been a lot harder in many other ways. So what it's done is it's taken a lot of the old school carburetor guys and turned them into EFI guys, which they said they probably never do, right. but they've gotten really good at it. I mean, if you look at the class as a whole right now, it's the most competitive class we've had in the history of the sport. You know, you're winning and losing by one two thousandths of a second every run, and typically, if you win or lose, it's who got their leg off that clutch first. first. Right. And how it reacts has a lot to do with what fuel we put in there, at what RPM, what it sees the tire, after the fuel moves the car. So you really have to think really big picture, not just what's the optimum tune-up for the engine. You really have to think about how that's going to impact what you have for clutch setup based on the track conditions and weather conditions. Correct. <clears throat> I mean, now you uh, guys all run within a couple of Hundreds of each other? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's mind cool. blowing. But it's, uh, you know, it's hats off to the guys who can take what they know about the entire package of the car and figure out how to put a laptop and a clutch together and still make your come up under the chip clean, mm -hmm. get off the chip, chip clean, and get through low gear. That's probably the most, the, the hardest part is coming off the chip and getting to the point where the clutch locks up. So call it from rough number 6,500 to 8,500. That okay. range. When you let go of the clutch pedal, you leave at 6,500, getting up to 8,500, how the engine reacts as the clutch is starting to clamp on the, onto it, yeah. that is the most critical part of probably the tune-up. Okay, that makes sense. I, I think to my go-kart stuff, we have some triple clutches. And it's getting the right slip so that it comes up right and catches and doesn't lug, but it also doesn't spin the tires off either, right? You have good acceleration. Same thing. 
Yeah, one, one wrong keystroke with this, if we're leaving at 6,500, one wrong keystroke, when I let go of the clutch, the engine will suck back to 5,800. And then we left at 5,800 versus 6,500 before it starts going up. That'll cost you three, four hundredths in ET just for something like that. Wow. So it is, uh, it's extremely critical that these two components work together. You know what? I think I'm going to leave the carburetor on the old vintage go kart, not the if I <laughs> Sorry, Ben Schrader. <laughs> well, what's on your Mercedes? It is definitely a carburetor, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was mechanical injection, actually. It's super say, old, right? It's it a diesel, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Old mechanical injection. Okay. Well, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.